evening, folks. I'm glad you're all here. Thank you very much for joining me. There was an earthquake that USGS didn't report. Surprise, for pri surprise. Um, EMSC had it. It was a magnitude 3.5 earthquake there in the Gulf of California. Oh, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you very much for joining me today. This earthquake got me to doing a whole bunch of research, some interesting stuff that I found. And the Corgelin Organic System. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. What that means is originally when the Pacific Ocean was subducting underneath North America. It was all going underneath at a fairly even pace from Washington and all the way down here to Mexico. But something happened for some reason that it decided to take a jump into the area of um, Oregon, Washington, Wyoming, up through um, the area of Yellowstone. This is how we got the uh, buildup of the mountains from the Cascadia Range. But for some reason, all of a sudden, um, it decided to move inland, um, leaving like a little finger pointing yeah, towards the east, which is now like the Yellowstone hotspot. Yeah, you know all about the magma that comes up from the mantle of the earth, goes across the United States and comes up there at Yellowstone. And then I found this other image, let me show you, where the magma, as um, the earth's plate subducts underneath the United States, it actually comes back up around, uh, going as far as, let's see, we got the states down here at the bottom, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and returns to California. Which leads me to this, uh, let's see, let me go up over here. I drew it out. Um, there was two earthquakes back in 1979 and in 1980. A 7.2 and a 6.4. Um, and in this area, after these earthquakes, they noticed that the well water had increased by at least 10 degrees. 10 degrees, yeah. And they took the measurements from over here where they have the geothermal, or at least some of the temperature um, taken from the uh, geothermal power plant, which is over here by uh, the Laguna Salda Fault, which led to the conclusion that they had magma coming up from these earthquakes that was causing the temperature rise in the groundwater. So this is what I came up with. We got that convention belt, I guess you could call it, of magma circulating around and then coming back up down here all the way to California. And then it seems to me, it looks like, where it goes back down. I've talked about the trees of magma in the mantle of our earth. This here is probably the best picture that I can find on such quick looking yeah short notice of making this video but here's the uh, mantle of the earth and then the, the magma comes up and makes these little branches like little trees kind of like a lava lamp how it circulates and comes back up so i think that's what's going on there in the gulf of california so we probably got trees of magma um, coming up off the west coast coming all the way around, let me show this again, um, being remelted, recirculating, and then going up all the way to Yellowstone. Many of you that follow me would recognize this image. This is the Gulf of California down over here. And the plume goes back up across the United States and comes up there at Yellowstone. And I've talked about how it circulates even up over here, going towards the west and then, yeah, um, flattening out. Another thing that I learned today was that the higher the elevation, um, you don't need as much temperature to melt the rock. I've often talked about how all rock um, melts at different temperatures. 
but evidently the higher the elevation, the less air pressure. So you don't need the extreme heat to melt the rock. Yeah, up there at um, Yellowstone. Yellowstone is about um, an 8,000 foot elevation. The higher the elevation, um, the less temperature you need to make water boil, which got me to thinking about the hydrothermal um, different eruptions they have there at Yellowstone. And evidently because of the elevation, it would take also very little heated water to melt the crust there at Yellowstone. I don't know if you can see this very well. It's pretty blurry for me, but it shows uh, the movement of the magma as it recirculates, like I said, like a lava lamp. I'm going to give you a link to this video. It, yeah, it's actually only about an hour long until then it goes into questions and answers. And I haven't watched um, the question and answers yet. But this is the magnetic flare-up of the Cordillera Orgenic System, the Teton Range, and Greater Yellowstone. Here you can see it's got drawn out the Pacific Ocean as it subducts underneath um, the United States, North America. And then the buildup of the Cascadia Arch. And see how it goes in all the way into where um, the current hot spot is. Of Yellowstone and he also talks about how the subduction with the lithosphere and how it flattened out when the uh, Farlon plate they think it broke up or was absorbed and then that created these different volcanic eruptions it's a long video but it's really educational so this is what I was watching today and it all started with this earthquake that USGS didn't report, this magnitude 3.5. Made me wonder, why are they not reporting this? Well, and then when I discovered that, yeah, these two earthquakes in 1979 and 1980 actually heated the well water by at least 10 degrees from one document that I found. Um, yeah, because of magma which means these fault lines are somehow connected to the magma that's coming up from the Earth's mantle. It's like, wow. The Laguna Salda fault line goes all the way up here, goes into the San Andreas Fault Zone. Yeah. Um, so then I thought about, um, remember that volcano movie years and years ago where they had a volcano that erupted in Los Angeles? Remember that? Yeah, so they took real science of something that could happen, made it into a sci-fi movie. Yeah. Um, I thought that was all real interesting. I hope you found it as interesting as I did. Um, yeah, watch that video, the doc uh, documentary. This evidently um, says geologists of Jackson Hole, um, J. Chapman, University of Wyoming. He did this presentation. Yeah, it's good. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless you all. Bye.